Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and this week's plant of the week is the Pippernum aureum, commonly referred to as the golden pothos. This is a quintessential house plant. I think everyone should grow this plant in their home. And the reason why I'm always trying to get that point across every time I talk about this plant is because I really slept on this plant for a couple of years when I first got into indoor gardening. Uh, this is one I would see at every house plant store. It would be on like every set of every television show on TV. So I just deemed it too common, and I didn't really want to bother with it. But it wasn't until I finally gave in and brought one home where I really realized that this is really truly such an incredible houseplant and I really was missing out. So these are a Pippernum aureum, as I said, aureum in Latin, I believe translates to like golden or yellow, which is referring to the beautiful yellow variegation that this plant gets in its leaves. And this is native to French Polynesia and has been naturalized in many like tropical and subtropical areas of the world to the point that I believe it's become a bit of an invasive species. So as that might suggest, this is an incredibly easy houseplant to grow, and that is also why it is such a common houseplant. The most common houseplants are usually common for a very good reason, and that is because they are extremely easy to grow inside the home. So when it comes to sunlight, you can give this thing a wide array of sunlight and it will do very, very well. I would just avoid uh, the darkest corners of your home and the brightest windows in your home. I would leave those for your succulents and your ZZ plants. Uh, this is going to live happily in every space in between. If you have this close to a bright window, it's going to grow very, very fast. In fact, you might find it growing like a foot every month in the growing season, which is exponential in comparison to many of the other houseplants that I have in my home. The two that I have right here with me today are rather new to me, which is why they are still inside their planters, as I just realized like a month or two ago that I don't have any golden pothos in my home. I had like four or five before I moved to this apartment, and I guess I, without thinking, got rid of all of them, thinking I kept at least one of them when I was moving just to alleviate the moving stress of moving hundreds of plants. Uh, so I just recently brought in these two, uh, and it will take no time for them to be beautiful cascading house plants. And these are plants that you will typically be hanging up high, and because of that, they might be ones that you uh, kind of tend to less, which is not really a big deal with these, as these are rather drought-tolerant houseplants. In fact, they are very drought-tolerant to the point that when it is time to water them, uh, they will get a little bit droopy. You will visually see if it's like hanging up up high, you will visually see these leaves start to droop a little bit. In fact, uh, this plant that I have right here, I can tell, could use a drink right now and it would begin to tell me probably in a day or two's time, uh, even more so that it needs a drink because it would get even droopier. But these leaves are definitely a little bit more floppier uh, than these leaves right here, which have a little bit more succulence to the leaves. They have more water coursing through their veins, a little bit more upright, a little bit more erect in comparison to this one, which is way more floppy. Uh, so uh, this one could use a drink, but like I said, within a day or two's time, this one would definitely start to droop even more. Uh, and that's totally fine, I'd say, within the first couple days of noticing that plant droop, it is good to go ahead and water it and you will not have any consequences. But if you do extend beyond those couple of days of droopy pothos, uh, you will probably start to get some of the leaves start to turn yellow, usually from the base of the plant. But once you water your pothos, it will perk up again. It's just those leaves that have already turned yellow are not gonna come back. They are going to slowly die off. And that can cause you to have a rather bald plant at the base of your plant and then all of the beautiful vines uh, will have leaves on them but they might slowly as time goes on lose leaves and then you might have some like bare vine and then a bunch of leaves down below. So just to kind of uh, avoid that you can be a little bit more on top of watering your pothos but you can use the droop to kind of try to understand the watering routine when you're first getting to know your pothos and how often you're going to have to water it. Speaking of the yellowing leaves though, if you are watering your pothos too much, uh, it might also yellow its leaves from the base of the plant. So you can kind of use that information to troubleshoot your pothos. If you are getting yellow leaves on your pothos uh, and it's not drooping, perhaps you're watering it too much or not giving it enough light as those kind of go hand in hand. Uh, but if your plant is drooping and you're getting the yellow leaves, you're probably not watering your plant enough or perhaps its soil uh, is draining too quickly or isn't water retentive. Uh, so moving on to the soil, uh, this is good to use a nice aroid chunky mixture. It doesn't have to be as intricate as like what you would use for like your fancy philodendrons. I'm sure you could get away with just a classic houseplant mix, uh, but I will usually add at least a little bit of bark or perlite into my houseplant mixes with my pothos to uh, get them to grow their fullest potential. And I wouldn't normally say this, but I think you could probably get away with growing this in soil that's just like straight from the bag 
from the big box store. Don't quote me on that, even though I just said it, but it's probably okay. These are very, very easy house plants to grow. In terms of the humidity, you don't even have to worry about it. Whatever humidity you have in your household is fine. These plants are truly tough as nails. I think the most important thing to get down with this plant is the watering uh, and the lighting, as you will probably be subjecting these to a wide array of light situations, as I have always done growing these in my home, since they are much more forgiving. So of course, the more light you give these plants, the more often you're gonna be watering them versus the less light you give these plants, the less often you're gonna be watering them as they're just not going to process the water as fast without the additional sunlight. Pothos will do fine in just standard household temperature as well. I know these thrive on warmer temperatures, so they'll probably grow faster for you if you have them in warmer temperatures, like 70 to 80 to 90 degrees, but I don't see these suffering whatsoever if they're going down to like 50, 55 degrees. They're just certainly not going to grow as fast. These are definitely going to grow faster. Like the more light you give them, the warmer they are, uh, but they will absolutely survive in a darker, colder condition. Uh, these are toxic. They're moderately toxic to pets. If you do have any pets or nippy children in your home, I would be mindful. But fortunately, this is one that people are often putting up high. This one I have up on a shelf in my bedroom, which I'm hoping in due time it will start to cascade down the wall as the old one that I had in my home that I guess I gave away did. And then this one I actually have up on my wall in a basket, which I just have it inside this planter stage for this video today but I have it in a basket where I am hoping as well that it will start to cascade forward in front of the basket and start to envelop it and give it those tropical jungle vibes. I wouldn't consider pothos to be pest magnets whatsoever. I've rarely had pest problems with my pothos in my home before, but if there are plants in like the vicinity of a pothos plant that have like thrips or spider mites or mealybug on them, I might find some of those, plant, uh, those pests working their way over to my pothos plants but it is uh, pretty easy to control with just some standard pest treatment. So I wouldn't be too worried about pests when it comes to your pothos. But like I said, if you do have pests in your home already or in the area, I would be mindful uh, because these could get it. I think I have had a, a bit of a thrips problem before on one of my pothos, but I think that was caused from, like I said, a plant next to it that was attracting said thrips. And to propagate these plants, uh, this is just like the easiest house plant to propagate ever. All you need uh, is at least one node, which node is where the leaf will meet the stem. And you'll notice these notches at every part where the leaf meets the stem uh, that has these little like nubs that kind of look like roots because that is where the roots would come out. And as long as this is in contact with water or soil or some other growing material, uh, this will root up in no time and grow into a full plant. In fact, I'm doing a video very soon uh, where I will be showing you guys how you can turn just one vine of a pothos plant into a full plant to already start out with. So stay tuned for that. And last but not least, I think I still have to touch upon the fertilizing for this houseplant, which uh, like I said, this is such an easy houseplant to grow. I don't even think it would be mad at you if you didn't fertilize it for a couple of years because this thing just has such vigor to grow which is actually funny that I say that because I know that there's been an article going around the past couple years about how pothos apparently is the plant that just wants to die because it hasn't flowered since the early 1960s. Uh, so I don't know what's going on with this uh, evolution wise, but they're saying that this plant no longer really wants to live on planet Earth or something along those lines, which is quite fascinating actually. Uh, but you can just fertilize this on, on another note. You can just fertilize this uh, using a standard houseplant fertilizer, you can just cut it in half uh, as you never want to over fertilize your houseplants. And this thing already grows enough that you do not need to give it any additional fertilizer, which over fertilizing your plants sounds like it would cause them just to grow more and be even stronger, but it actually causes them to get burnt leaves. So that is something you want to be wary of. Uh, so less is always more. But I think that's going to do it for today's quintessential houseplant for the home, the Epipernum aureum or the Golden Pothos. There are also plenty of variants on this houseplant, but I really just wanted to talk about the tried and true today. So thank you so much for joining me. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.